My first question will come from Jay Anderson. What's up, Jay? Thanks very much, Phil. We're not doing too bad. Uh, I want to ask you, first of all, with Ryan Bader. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, I got you. We could hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mr. Perfect. Anderson. <laughs> I get that way more often than I care to admit. Um, yeah, let me just start over. With Ryan Bader okay. losing that light heavyweight title, um, that kind of eliminates an obstacle you had in getting back to the title shot, namely the losses to him. Not that I'm questioning your motivation, but does that light a little extra fire under you heading into this fight? Um, you know, uh, it's kind of like all things are connected. It, it, it's, you know... I got to get through this fight in order to get to uh, get back to the belt. So, I mean, I'm as motivated for this fight as I am for the next fight because it's all, uh, it's all connected to where I want to be. When you look at this one, I mean, you and Leoto first fought, you know, seven years ago, needless to say you've grown, but how have you changed? And do you see him as having changed his game significantly since that first fight? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, I, in his last fight versus Chelsea and he was, uh, he, he showed a little bit more range in terms of techniques than, uh, than I've seen previously. Um, he's always been good with his knees, but, uh, he looked, you know, pretty athletic. He moves pretty well. So, um, a little bit, a little bit, he just, he, he's, he's definitely, uh, an evolved fighter as well. A last one for me. I mean, this is going to be a different kind of fight for you. No crowd, both corners audible. What are you expecting going in there? And have you done anything to kind of prepare for that environment in terms of, you know, imitating it in the gym? Uh, you know, I mean, preparing for, a, you know, silent arena. I, I train in a silent gym all the time. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, the hard part is training for, uh, you know, not being able to hear and training for a loud crowd. But uh, this, I imagine, will be very similar to, to, to you know, training. Sometimes you have a, a tough guy that comes in from somewhere else and his coach is there coaching him and your coach is there coaching you. And uh, it, it'll be very similar to that. But, All right. Well, best uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Steve Jewell. All right. Thank you, Phil. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And it's been about a year now since your fight with Carl Albrechtson, and the world has changed significantly in that time. So how has your training changed up with the new pandemic circumstances we're all living with? Uh, I, I now spar with the mask on because uh, it's it's very similar to the training mask. No, I'm kidding. I don't. <laughs> um, I, what I mostly do is uh, I, my training time has changed and my training schedule has changed. Uh, I'm the, the flexible parent in my house. So uh, with with no school, um, you know, I spend most of my time at home teaching and uh, making food and all of those good things. And uh, I get my workouts in, in the morning and then again uh, in the evening. And uh, other than that, not much has changed. Um, it's just being uh, more flexible and more uh, intentional with my time. All right. And having seen Nemkov dethrone Ryan Bader, Obviously, that was a goal of yours to mm -hmm. get that win over Bader and get the title back. But now, knowing that you fought Nemkov to such close split decision last time, how motivated do you feel knowing that you're already in the driver's seat? Well, I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm as motivated as ever. And, uh, you know, all things are connected. You know, this fight is uh, I, my, my ultimate goal is to get back to that. Uh, belt to a world title and, and, and be the champion and has the belt. And um, uh, I want that belt. And this fight is standing in the way of me 
getting into a, a championship fight. And so, uh, you know, I, and, and that, that's been my, my thought press all along is, uh, yeah, just keep, stay doing what you're doing. You got to string, string together a bunch of victories, make your case that you want to be the champion. And, uh, and that's the way it works. So, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pumped and I'm motivated. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing your performance on Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you. John? Hi, Phil. Uh, I was wondering, you know, I know you beat Mashida back in 2013. Do you remember anything from that fight? And did you rewatch that fight before this one? Uh, yeah, that was a, you know, that was a special fight for me. Uh, big name like Machida for the former champion down in Brazil. Uh, you know, it's just, everything was, uh, that was a really big fight. And uh, especially from my career. And uh, that's a fight I'm going to remember forever. I feel like I remember every minute of that fight. And um, I actually did not go back and rewatch it. I just don't want, I expect um, that enough time has taken place that he won't be as much like that fighter. And I know that I am nothing like, uh, well, I, obviously the same person had the same uh, skill set, but uh, improved on that. Um, but there's, there's, there's less value in, some of the things that happen because there's so much time that's elapsed in between. Um, so I expect that uh, a lot of the things that I might see, a lot of the mistakes I might find, maybe won't be there. And then just the last thing for me then, um, a few weeks ago, Scott Coker was saying how he believes that Bellator has the best light heavyweight division in the whole entire sport. Do you agree with that? I don't know how I can not believe that. I mean, that it, it's... Uh, we stack up well. Um, we well, I, I wouldn't even stay stack up. We, we we simply have the best fighters in the world. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate the time. Mm -hmm. Hi, Phil. Uh, you've had uh, your fair share of rematches in the past, like with Bader and uh, McGeary. Just uh, does it make it more difficult going into a rematch? Like. Uh, do you feel a little hesitant at times because you know maybe some of the things you did in that first fight might not work in the second fight? That's always the thing going in with rematches. Um, and I felt that uh, with my rematches with Bader and McGeary and um, uh, – but this one is a little bit different. So much time has gone past. Um I'm not. I'm not exactly sure how much is the same. I'm going to get. Um, he's probably going to get an entirely different look. Not even by my choosing. That's just who I am now. Yeah, and and uh, uh, you know, there's a lot to overthink. But the, that's the thing with rematches. It's a lot to overthink. And uh, I, I try my best not to. I, I've got on my game to a place where. Uh, I'm completely confident every time I go in and, and what I'm capable of doing. And um, and I've just improved on so much in between uh, 2013 and now that, uh, you know, you don't want to overthink it by going back and seeing, looking at your old mistakes. And the uh, final question for me uh you just spoke about that, like improving. What area of your game do you feel you've improved on the most? Well, uh, hmm. Uh, maybe my stand-up is, uh, is, is probably received the, the greatest margin in that time span. I've definitely improved on my grappling and my wrestling, my my – uh, my finishing rate in, in terms of getting into different grappling positions and from ground and pound. So, uh, you know, I, I just, everything has just uh, increased over, over the last five, six years. Okay. Um, excuse me, gentlemen, I'm just in the middle of dinner in London. Um, mm -hmm. So do forgive me. Let me just finish what's in my mouth. 
Um, Mr. Davis, sir, you know with the mask on you look 25, not 35. Ah, thank you. You do. You You really do. And anyone else watching you now will agree with me because you looked so young when you walked in just then with the mask on. Uh, I, mean, I hope you. I hope you wash down that uh, that food with some Earl Grey, my friend. Uh, yeah, I will be indeed. Um, so I spoke, uh, I've got three little questions. Really, I spoke to you during lockdown, and mm-hmm. we had an amazing chat. And you were at home with the family, and you were saying that that you really wanted to carefully tailor not gym hopping too much mm. when you were training. How has, how has that changed then in reality, getting ready for the fight? Man, uh, I, I, it did not change. I, um, I just kept it, kept it small. I just kept it small. Uh, you know, when I need more training partners, uh, you know, I, I, I have my, my set guys that I work with and I did my best to coordinate that they come to me. And, uh, and, and and that was what worked, and that was what worked. Um, so I, I kept it as small as possible and stayed in uh, stayed in one spot. Can I just take you back to that question? Very good question just now by one of the other journos about um, the the first fight with Leota Machida because I remember that fight as well, and mm-hmm. and I think could I take you further in terms of what you're saying because at the time when you fought him. It was in the middle of him fighting Rashad Evans, Shogun twice, Quinton Jackson, Randy Couture, John Jones, Ryan Bader, Dan Henderson, then you, Mark Munoz, Gegard Mousasi, and Chris Weidman. Um, when you had that fight with him, did your, and as you say, it was down in Brazil, um, former champion, was that the night? Because he, he still had that air of impenetrability at the time yeah. with, with his yeah. skills was that the night you your self-belief grew in all, enormously um, yes uh you know i've always i've always believed in myself uh more so more so than my self-belief it was more of the i told you so <laughs> you know uh at that time Man, Machida, and to this day, Machida is just a hard guy to land a glove on. Yeah. And um, and after that fight, it was like, whoa, what happened here? Like he, that looked very different from any fight he had had uh, previously. You know, um, he, he really doesn't get taken down as much. You know, he's very good at getting up. And and that t- uh, that fight, he got he got taken down, and you know he couldn't get up. He was getting uh, he was getting taken shots from from top or from bottom, and um, and so uh, I, I feel like that more than anything, kind of uh, really. Uh, it, it, so I agree with you. Yes, it my my confidence did grow, and you know you can you can do what you do to anyone in the world. But I, I think the, the MMA fans kind of grew this appreciation for there's something about Phil that is completely different from he has a, he has a skill set that is hard to match. Yeah, against one of the guys who had always been considered very hard to very to hard. Yes. Mental. Now, that's what I meant. That's what I was getting at, because it was. Yeah, I, I know what you meant. And that's why I said it, because I was like, I know what he means. So I'm going to just say it for him. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are you considering this fight with Leoto literally an eliminator for you to get back in there with Nemkov? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I want to be back in there and uh, fighting for that title. I want to win that title back. And uh, there's only one path to the title, and that's victory. And that's that's always been the plan. That's Even before I had the belt the first time, it was a uh, win-win-win. And then you'll end up at the title. So this is no different. All right. Thank you very much, Phil. Appreciate it. We'll be right back with Captain Ghana.